For the Knights, the season is over, and the story of the past couple of weeks has been about victory parades, trophy presentations, champagne, medals, civic receptions, and the sweet taste of glory. The title has been won and history has been made, and we're here to celebrate in the final edition of Inside the Knights. Tonight is the night's presentation evening here in the beautiful surroundings of York Racecourse. This time last year the atmosphere was a little bit deflated after that narrow player final defeat at Widnes. But this year the mood should be one of elation as the Knights got their hands on that promotion spot. To start the show I'm going to speak to the man at the top of the club, Chairman Roger Dixon. Happy times for the York City Knights and happy times for Roger Dixon one of the main protagonists behind the formation of the club three years ago. What better reward for all the hard work Roger and the other members of the Knights family have put in than a championship trophy? Thinking about the events of 2002, Roger, how much pleasure have the celebrations on winning the league given you? Tremendous amount of pleasure, for self-evident reasons. You know, the disappointment of last uh, year's grand final defeat, well, the joy of this year's championship, it's wonderful. I'm so pleased for everybody who's in, been involved in it, I really am. It must have been quite emotional for you to see the streets of York packed with well wishes and obviously appreciating the work that you and so many people put in. I, I was in common with the players, totally taken aback by it. Uh, it was a marvellous gesture by the City Council to lay the civic reception on for the club and to see the way that the people turned out and cheered the team. Well, it proves that sport and success in sport does put many smiles on many faces. It was a wonderful day. Thinking about the future, next season is going to be quite a challenge. Obviously, it's obvious to say it's going to be more difficult on the field, but what challenges do, does promotion give the actual club itself? In, there are a lot of organisational challenges. I mean, there is a financial implication, obviously, of playing at a higher level. There is a requirement of the RFL to field an academy side, which for, you know, forms part of the overall plan that we've had, but that will add maybe thirty or forty thousand pounds sort of expenditure to the annual outgoings. And one has to acknowledge that players at National League One level are going to be looking for higher remuneration as well. Um, also, one hopes uh, one is going to be dealing with a greater number of crowds, and so the, the actual match day arrangements, insofar as we are able. Uh, within the constraints that we're currently working, they'll need to be that much more refined and professional as well to deal with the increased number of people and to minimise any crowd frustration over access to the ground, parking and all those, and access to the bar, of course, after the game. The thing you mentioned about the academy is an interesting one because there, well, there is a plan in the pipeline to have an academy, but not quite as soon as perhaps the Rugby Football League would like. Uh, that's true. I mean, the scholarship scheme, as you know, the 13 and 14 year olds, the 15 year olds, and it's a natural progression and indeed would form the natural link between the scholarship players on the one hand and first team football eventually on the other. And in a previous programme that uh, you've run about the Knights, that, that scenario has been adumbrated by Phil Seymour and Ian Wilson. Um, yes, m maybe it's come a little sooner than we would have planned, but nevertheless, it's a problem, but a happy problem, that goes with the territory of promotion. And if we're serious about the journey on which we've embarked, uh, then uh, we must just embrace it and do the very best we can to deliver it. We often talk about the structure of the Knights and how it's put in place, a kind of almost Super League-style standard structure. Will there be any changes, do you think, to that structure, or do you think we're absolutely ready 100% for this promotion? I don't want to sound complacent. I think the, the structures are there and I think the personnel are there. Um, maybe we could do with one or more uh, additions to the staff simply to act in a sort of deputing capacity so that if anyone were on holiday or ill or something like that we had cover. Um, but no, I, I believe the quality of the staff uh, that are in position, their dedication and their commitment and the fact that people know now what is expected. We, we all do, myself very much included. We, we, we're beginning to feel where our role is, understand our role, understand the perimeters of 
uh, others' involvement and responsibilities. There's, there's always obviously filled room for improvement. But no, so far as the administrative side of the club is concerned, I, I believe that the, the relevant structures are in place. Um, there's a well-known face joining the club's uh, scholarship scheme coaching staff, Mick Ramsden, and obviously Mick and Lee Jackson retiring at the end of the season. Could I have some words from you about the contribution they've made to the club? Well, each has made their own unique contribution. I mean, going back to the 2002, when Paul Broadbent came, uh, to find that Lee Jackson, with the pedigree and the credibility that a player of his experience would lend to any organisation he joined. There must, I suspect, have been one or two eyebrows uh, that thought, well, why is he going there, as it were? Uh, that is, I think, testimony to the relationship he had with Paul Broadbent. And the fact that Paul and introduced Lee, and that Lee gave us a buzz, I think, in truth. I think when people thought that Lee, the, the great Lee Jackson was coming to this particular club, well, there must be something going on there. And I was just delighted for him, truly delighted, when uh, he scored that, the last points of this championship winning season. It couldn't have been a more storybook and fitting ending. I'm so glad. And I thank him. I thank him for sticking with it. Because I suspect that, it, that last year particularly must have taken a great toll on him physically, as well as the pressures that it puts on his dear family, uh, wife and children. But I know last year he was so disappointed not to have achieved what he had set out for himself, uh, the goal being promotion last year. And uh, I'm just very grateful to him and dear Mick. Well, the sheer delight on his face on the day of the Civic Reception said it all, as well as his comments that were reported on that day. Mick. Uh, without embarrassing him, just like me, they're both quality players. They're quality individuals and great additions to any group of people. They're just good people, committed professionals. And I'm very happy indeed that Mick has decided that he's going to continue his relationship with the club, albeit in a different capacity. He has tremendous expertise to pass on, and he's a huge ambassador. Uh, not only for our club, but for the game of rugby league generally, and uh, we are the uh, beneficiaries of his desire to work with us in the future. So I'm grateful to them both. I really am. They've, they've been marvellous, marvellous club members, team players, and sportsmen. Finally, on a light-hearted note, is Roger Dixon ready for National League One? Oh, in what capacity? <laughs> Certainly not as a player. <laughs> I don't know whether, I, I, maybe is National League one ready for me, I don't know uh, how many more speeches will one have to make. I think my nerves will just about stand it, Phil. I think they will. Well, great. We're very much looking forward to it, and thanks for speaking to us. Not at all, no, thank you, and thank you again for all your interest in the club. In the last edition of our show, we spoke to Lee Jackson about his retirement, and sadly the squad is losing another fantastic pro in Mick Ramsden, who's also hanging up his boots. So who better to speak to in the last edition of our programme than a guy who's been such a great servant to rugby league in York? The final game of the season away at the Don Valley Stadium marked the end of Mick Ramsden's long rugby league playing career. Mick has always given 100% and as a result has been a favourite with rugby league fans in York for a number of years. And while his playing days are now over, the good news is that Mick is planning to stay with the club as a coach to help with the Knights scholarship scheme. Mick, there's been a lot of celebrations after winning the championship. How has the season been for you? Uh, it's been um, like a culmination of three years of really good hard work. Um, it's been a, a, like just a, a dream three years really. and. Uh, um, to finish uh, getting promotion after three years of the Knights been, a, been in existence, it's uh, tremendous, really good. How did you enjoy the victory parade and the reception? Uh, it was, uh, I, I wasn't too sure how it had all sort of worked out really, um, but when we turned into St Helens Square and saw all the fans there, um, it was uh, quite amazing really, you know, I didn't really expect it to be as good as that, um, but it was just, uh, there must have been a thousand people there and it was, um, it brought a bit of a lump to my throat to be honest with you, it was excellent. So you had a long career in the city yeah, of York. Yeah. Obviously, we're celebrating the good times, but you've seen some really dark days as well. Yeah, I think that, that sort of um, it makes uh, the whole sort of three years pretty special for me because um, I've been there during the bad times when 
um, you know, we weren't winning very much and um, things were pretty poor and the organisation wasn't very good and the players weren't really good and um, I think uh, having been there and seen, seen it in those bad days, um, it makes it more special for me to be involved with the Knights for the past three years and sort of um, establishing rugby in York again, which is what I, I always wanted to do. Um, I didn't really enjoy the, the last year at the Wasps, but I stuck with them and um, I was just pleased that I could be part of all this. So to go from being in a group of players that offered to play for the Wasps for nothing, yeah. to come to an event like tonight with the trophy on the table and obviously everyone's having a great time, champions, that must mean a lot to you. Uh, it means, uh, it means you know, a massive amount to me. Um, I think Wendy said that there's 400 people here, which are about, it's about 150 people more than the last Wasps match. And uh, I remember those days when there was only a couple of hundred people watching us. And um, although I still felt a lot of pride in wearing the Yorkshire, um, it was quite tough in those days, you know. You, you sort of, you sort of expected to be beaten in the at the end, and it was it was pretty awful, really. Um, so, like having been there during the bad days, it's made it, you know, more special for me. So you decided to retire at the end of the season. So yeah. obviously that's finished now. Do you have any regrets about that? And would you fancy a crack at NL1, or are you happy with your decision? No, no. I think um, I think it's, it's it's always difficult to know when to stop playing. And um, as much uh, as as I love playing and um, I enjoy the training and, and, and everything to do with um, being part of a team. Um, I don't see it as being the end for me. There's, there's, it's almost a beginning. Um, I'm going to look, in, look to move into coaching and hopefully the Knights will give me a chance to, to work with them and try and learn as much as I can about being a successful coach. Um, I've got my own goals in mind for the next 10 years and I hope to try and work hard for the Knights and um, you know, try and play my part in getting them into Super League. So the good news is you're staying on at the club in a new capacity. Do you want to yeah. tell us about that? Um, it, it's not really fully finalised yet. Um, we, I've had a, a brief discussion with uh, with Mick Cook, and I, I've sort of I've given him some information as to what I want to achieve. Um, I sort of understand that probably a lot of it's up to me and and how much uh, sort of time I want to spend and how hard I want to work to try and. Um, make myself into a coach and I understand that, that it, a lot of it's up to me but I know I've got something to offer and um, hopefully you know if the Knights give me that opportunity I'll take it and in years to come everybody will, will win really you know. Looking back over your long career what are the things that are really stand out let's say it, 10 years from now when you look back what, do you, what yeah. are the, your main memories that you treasure? Um, I think uh, the fact that you, you make so many friends in rugby league um, not just players but people who are involved with the club um, and I've, I've just made a lot of friends for life really and there's a lot of people in this room that I, I consider my really, really good friends. Um, and that's, that's one of the special things about the game. Um, there seems to be like a special bond with people who are involved with rugby league. Um, you know, I can think back and um, I've, I've enjoyed all, playing with the players and training with the players and just the general crack of the game and you know, it's, it's been good. So finally, how would you like people to remember the player Mick Ramsden? Um, <laughs> I think uh, I don't think I was ever the best player. Um, I, I was never uh, the most talented player, but I always feel that I always did my best. Um, I always trained hard, and um, I always, you know, tried to be as professional as I possibly possibly could as a, as a semi-professional player who worked as well. Um, it takes up a massive amount of your time, but um, you know, to me, if you're going to try something, you should always try your hardest, and I always tried to tried my hardest. And hopefully, um, now that my, my playing career is finished, hopefully, hopefully I can uh, I can do my best at coaching. Well, thanks for your time, Mick. It's been a real pleasure to to watch you play, and all the best right. for the future. Right, thanks very much. Cheers. Thanks to Mick, a guy who played his heart out, lost his club, became disillusioned and walked away from the sport, and came back to propel the Knights to the championship and won that medal in his final season at the club. What a fantastic story and what a fantastic career and all the best from us to Mick for the future. Join us after the break for all the footage from the match away at Sheffield Eagles, Mick Ramsden and Lee Jackson's last ever game for the York City Knights.
successful conversion for you. City Knights squaring number four, Neil Moore.
Division 4 York City Knights. And In the final edition of Stat Zone for the 2005 season, we'll take you through a tie-up of the loose ends now the Knights have been promoted. In the final round of the regular league season, the Knights denied Sheffield Eagles the chance of a playoff spot with a relatively comfortable victory as you've just seen. Final score, Eagles 10, Knights 36. Elsewhere, Dewsbury Rams managed to hold on to second place with a 22-18 win at Swinton Lions. Pipping challenges Workington, who also won away 2016 at Keighley Cougars. The final playoff spot went to Gateshead Thunder, despite their defeat at Hunslet Hawks, and in the basement battle, the Panthers beat the Scholars 20 points to 6. A final look at the top of the LHF Healthland National League 2 table sees the York City Knights as the champions and pre-season favourites Dewsbury in second place. It's been a tough year in the league this time round and Workington and Swinton can also be proud of their efforts in the campaign. In the lower half of the table, Gates had claimed the last playoff spot, but there was disappointment for Sheffield Eagles and Keithley Cougars who will need to rebuild if they're to make a challenge in 2006. Blackpool Panthers had a disappointing season and their future in the game is in doubt. And London Scholars finished the season in last place with only two wins out of 18 games. Take a good look at this graphic because it's highly unlikely most of these names will be seen again on Inside the Knights. Moving on now to the results in the playoffs and the fight to join the Knights in NL1 next season. In the elimination playoffs, Workington Town's good form continued into the knockout phase with a crushing 47-12 win over Gates of Thunder at Derwent Park, eliminating the Geordies from the competition. In the other game in week one, Swinton Lions turned over the Hunslet Hawks 40 points to 28. The men from South East Stadium going out of the competition after a good campaign under coach Roy Sampson. In the qualifying semi-final, Batley Bulldogs beat their heavy woolen neighbours Dewsbury Rams 40 points to 20 in front of a bumper crowd at Mount Pleasant of 1,961 to secure a place in the grand final. In the other game in week two, the elimination semi-final, Swinton Lions were beaten in a tight game at Derwent Park, Workington victorious by a single point, 17 points to 16. 
In the final eliminator, Dewsbury Rams edged past Workington 28 points to 16 to set up a West Yorkshire derby with the Bulldogs in the grand final. The Rams led 16-10 at half time after tries from fullback Ian Priest, winger Darren Rogers, and hooker Richard Chapman, together with two conversions from man of the match Francis Maloney. Johnny Limmer replied with Towns' try, while Jonathan Roper added three first half goals and a fourth soon after the break. However, it wasn't enough for the Cumbrians, who despite beating the Knights both home and away during the regular season, will be playing National League Two rugby in 2006. Batley Bulldogs will be playing in LHF Health Plan National League One again next season after edging past arch rivals Dewsbury Rams in a pulsating grand final. A capacity crowd of over 13,000 at Holton Stadium witnessed both sides leading three times. The Bulldogs looked to be running away with the game when they raced into an early 10 0 lead, but Rams' former Castleford trio of Darren Rogers, Ryan Sheridan, and Maloney clawed Dewsbury back into the contest, scoring 14 of their 18 first half points. But former Leeds Rhinos Academy standoff John Gallagher was the hero for Batley, his hometown club, getting over for the winning try 12 minutes from time, after the Rams had looked like taking the game. Congratulations to both sides for a cracking contest and a great advert for the game. Lastly, let's take a look at the final table of leading try scorers and what a wonderful season for young winger Peter Fox, who finished the season as top scorer with a haul of 25 tries. In second was Dan Potter with 16, then Neil Law with 14 and captain Chris Levy with 11. Another high scoring season for the club, but tries will be much harder to come by against tougher defences in NL1 next season. Now there are not many coaches in rugby league that can say in their first season as head coach they won the title, but that's certainly exactly what Mick Cook can say about this season's championship. And so for the last interview in our series, it's only right to give the last word to Mick. Mick Cook is this season's LHF Health Plan National League 2 Coach of the Year, an award fully deserved for his achievements with the Knights this year. In his first season as a head coach, he has brought the club promotion and will stay with the club next year, becoming the first Knights coach to have more than one season at the helm. Mick, at the beginning of the season, you told me we'd win the competition, and we won the competition, so everything went to plan. Yeah, apart from me losing all my hair, yes, as you know, at the start of the season, I had a good head of hair with big curtains like yourself, <laughs> and uh, it's all gone, but it's, it's been a great season. You know, we, we didn't shout about what we, was, you know, what we wanted to achieve this year. We, the players and myself and the coaching staff, we just went about it on a week to week, and. It's worked for us and we've actually won the competition and we've had the rewards that go with that. So, it, yeah, everything's gone according to plan and it's, it's happy days tonight. So what do you think the key to the success of the team's been this season? I think it's just it's a bit more you know, commitment and, and willingness to win games. You know, We've had games out there that have been pretty tough to win and we've come back from horrendous <laughs> results where we're looking like we're going to get wiped out and we've come back and fought back and stuck in there and, and played. And won them so, it, and that little things like that, they earn you the right to win competitions. You know, it, it, they're easy to lose games like that. But our blokes this year, they've had a bit more steel about them. They, you know, we've got some quality in there as well, and we've got some experience, and, and they've come through and they've won the games that we had to win to win this competition. So your first year and your first post as outright head coach, and you've won a title. There can't be many people that can say that. So you must be really proud of that achievement. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm proud of the I'm proud of the people around me. I'm proud of this club. The, the, you know, right at the top level, they're looking to get things as you see tonight. It's, it's a great, it's a great presentation evening. Everything about it's top quality. You know, there's a lot of people here. Uh, they, they've obviously got things. You know, the directors, they've got everything in place at the top. They've, you know, they've, they've employed myself this year through Leeds to come in and do some, you know, some of the coaching. We've got a good squad of players, um, and we've, we've done the hard work. And it's, it's been, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. It's been a bit frustrating at times. Don't get me wrong, but. It's, it's it's rewarding as well, you know. The, just to that that somebody to haul up the the open top bus ride through York Centre and the crowd and people coming out of the shops. It it just makes all the sacrifices you make throughout the season worthwhile. And and I think the players really appreciated that. A lot of them have not experienced that before. I've had minor experiences with Leeds and and with Sheffield in winning trophies, but 
that was something special. And to actually go in the townhouse, the manor house with, with the Lord Mayor, and we had a couple of drinks and some food, it, it just capped off what has been a, it's been a tough season. But we've worked hard, you know, we've worked hard as players, we've worked hard as coaching staff and the directors and everybody about the club, the supporters have worked hard supporting us home and away. And it, it just caps off what's, it's, it's, I think it's a move forward for, for York as a, as a club and for York as a city. So what have you learnt this season as head coach? <laughs> Oof. It's easy, very easy to lose your hair. Um, learn, I've, I've learned a lot of things, I've had far more, you know, work to do regarding you know working with media you know the exposure of, of head coach of the York City Knights is far superior to what I've experienced before as as the under 21s coach at Leeds and an assistant coach obviously the head coach does all the dealings with press media so it's been great for me um, you know they can be quite challenging at times especially York TV some of the questions they ask you but <laughs> on a serious note it, it's 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 been a great development year for myself. Hopefully next year I'll be a little bit stronger, a little bit more experienced to deal with the pressures that will come in the NL1. I'm sure there will be. and It's, it's, it's been a great year for a lot of people as well. You know, the, the crowd, they've, they've never stopped supporting us. The players, they've had to really you know, ask questions of themselves in difficult situations and get through them, which, which is a big challenge for a player. It's, it's, a, phys you know, it's a physical game. The, it's tough. It's hard. It's it's warm, and, and the players have had to they've had to come through in some real difficult challenges, and, and I really respect that. I, I think that is a sign of yeah, we haven't played well, but we've won a game that had to be won, and that I think is the small ingredient that's that's got us through and won a won a title and automatic promotion. Now looking at the list of teams in NL1, I know the playoffs are still going on, but you're looking at Widnes, Lee, possibly Cast, Whitehaven, Hull KR, Doncaster. Now that kind of scares me a little bit as a supporter. What about you as the head coach of the York City Knights? No, I mean, at the end of the day, we're looking to recruit as well and build around the nucleus of side we've, you know, we've got here already. We've got a lot of quality players here and I think another pre-season will make them better players for, for the NL1. We've, we've held his own, I'd, I'd say. We've played Doncaster in a friendly, we've had Featherston twice. Obviously Featherston's, you know, they've got relegated. We had Castleford twice. And on one of the occasions I thought we'd really challenge Castleford the first game, we challenged them first half, but we didn't really play, and we got blown away second half. But you know, we, we know the enormity, you know, the task for next year. We have to go out and, and play and, and recruit the side and and take them on. If we sit back and wait, you know, who knows what will happen? But we we just need to go out there and enjoy next year. We know it's going to be a, a fair ass. There's a, you know, there's going to be a lot of teams out there that are full time or full time status. We're part time, but I, th I think we'll. I think we're more than old as old next year. Because since we got promotion, people have mentioned the names Keithley and Barrow to us on a regular basis about what, obviously what's happened to them when they've gone up straight back down again, maybe one or two wins out of the whole 18 games. So is that in your mind? No, it's not really. I'm not sure of the situation at Barrow and I'm not sure of the situation at Keithley, but it, 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 we're a different club. You know, we've, we've got different, we've, we have a different mentality right through the club. Everybody's working hard to to go forward, so we, you know we're not we're not cutting back and saying oh we can't buy this player because we've we've only got X amount of pounds. If we need some players, we, we you know we have the, you know the directors they work very hard to get the sponsorship in there, and we will we will do probably whatever it takes to stay up there. But I think the way we're going at the moment, we're talking to a few quality players, and we get them on board. You know we build around the squad that we have already. I, I, I know it's a fair challenge, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure the players will be looking forward to it. At the moment, after today, they'll enjoy the break. You know, a couple of weeks off from football, by then they'll be pulling the hair out and <laughs> wondering what they've been doing for the rest of their life when, you know, and can't wait for pre-season to start. But it, it's a big challenge for everybody, I think. And we're, we're looking forward to it as a coaching staff. You know, the players, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to the challenge. It's, it's you know, to say, oh, well, yeah, you might come straight back down to the players. I don't think they're going to buy into that. We don't want to go up there and and sort of, you know come back down. It's it's not in our in our game plan at the moment. We're we're going up there to try and compete and and do the best we can. And hopefully, if we can crack into top six, I think that'll be a, a fair achievement for this for this club. If we do any better, well, it's a it's a massive bonus. But it, coming back down is not an option for us at the moment, and we're not thinking that way. Well, it's been great to follow the story of the team this season, Mick, and uh, congratulations and, well, good luck next season.
Yeah, well, hopefully we'll get the support from uh, York TV. It's been superb all year. I've seen all the tapes, all the videos, and I look terrible at times, but it's uh, it's great coverage for the club. You do a great job. Um, you, you're great blokes to work with, and hopefully you'll carry on next year. Thank you. Well, that's the end of this series of Inside the Knights. We hope you've enjoyed watching our programme. A big thank you goes from us to the York City Knights Rugby League Club, without whose help we couldn't have made this series. Congratulations on your great success. Next year is a new horizon, the next stage in the Super League dream. And while it's going to be very tough, as we've seen this season, dreams can come true. See you next season. Bye-bye. Help